Thursday, May 25th, 2017 meeting of the planning board. Uh, we start each meeting with an opportunity for anyone who wants to come speak to us at public comment. Uh, anything that's not on the agenda, we'll work our way through the agenda, but occasionally people want to bring up a topic of their own, so this is a starting point to do that. Um, our 7 o'clock uh, agenda item is a site plan, Brandon Brucius. Probably butchered that for Jonathan Tower to add detached residential structure at 55 Maple Street, Florence Map ID 23A 1059. Uh, <coughs> is there a presentation or are you going to summarize it for us? Uh, no, sir. Is there someone that wants to describe the project? Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I'm Jonathan. And um, this is, and this is my wife, Sarah. Hey. And we decided not to have the builders here tonight, um, but we are planning on building a small, detached, handicap accessible house next to our house in Florence for my sister who has MS. So when, when I went initially to the building committee, I'm a contractor, and said, what do I have to do? Is this going to be an accessory apartment? They said, no, Northampton recently passed a law where you can have another primary residence on your lot. So that triggered the planning board meeting. And so I, we submitted our plans um, to you guys. Did you Sorry? Some, did you discuss them with the building? Office, yeah. yeah, yeah, and there was a little bit of confusion back and forth. Would it be easier to make it an attached structure? We didn't, we didn't want a garage that goes across the whole lot. We wanted a carport, uh -huh. and um, and then the someone at the planning committee said, "Oh, well, you can do that. That would be considered attached." Went back to the building uh, department. They said, "No, we really don't like that. We want it." completely enclosed mm -hmm. so that is the plan right now is to have a 922 square foot single floor uh, building with a carport that goes over towards our existing house right. well insulated green <laughs> mm -hmm. that's right and the it's already zoned to family it's already zoned to family. so yep. do you have uh, road frontage and clearance and yep. so all of the questions that Louie would have asked you yep. you got the right answer yep. to yep yep 20 feet setback and 50 foot setback. And because it's a corner lot, we could pick which one was going to be 20 and which one was going to be 15. Uh -huh. The initial plans that I sent over, there wasn't clarification on the driveway. So I sent over more that it has to be, you know, 15 feet wide, yep. 10 feet back as a right of way. Is it a relatively dry plot? Yes. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's right the, at the top of the hill. Uh -huh. yeah. And there's sewer right there in our house, and there's the water there. So we act, our builder talked to the DDW to see if there was anything that, that we needed to be aware of with that, and he said, no, it could be simple to hook right in there. Yeah. There are um, considerations for how deep the sewer lines are in some places in town, but I'm sure in the middle of Florence they're good. Any questions <clears throat> for the applicant? Okay. Yeah. Um, Mark. Only question was it's it's slightly more than the 900 square foot allowance. Uh, just clarify that 922. Yeah, 922. So I can clarify that actually. So if someone is building an accessory apartment is only allowed as part of a single family home. So right now I'm not. Sh there was a and maybe the applicant can clarify whether there's currently a single or a two family. As a two family. Um, you can have an accessory apartment, and accessory apartments can only be 900 square feet. So this happens to be in a zone where there's, you know, there are options. So now we allow this detached additional residential unit, which would have to be the path, even if it were a single family home, because it exceeds the 900 square feet anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's why from, um, you know, the zoning standpoint, it came through as a site plan from the planning board as opposed to a special permit to the zoning board of appeals and so not being an accessory apartment also means there won't be the requirement that it the unit be owner that one of the units be owner occupied um, so it's treated slightly differently even though it is 
a very, you know, comparable size to an accessory unit as defined in Northampton. Okay. Thank you. Somewhere in there, there, there was something that said something about having to have s six parking spaces. So, <laughs> It depends on the total number of units. So if, I don't know if you can clarify whether th this is a, the existing house, is it a single or a two family? Right, right now we'll determine. So it's two spaces per unit, essentially, except for, every, because it's based on one per thousand square feet of area. Okay, so that was in there in case that was a, already a two right. family. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> so I don't know if you can clarify that. So the house right now is all owned by or occupied by one family. Okay. So it functions as a single family. It functions as a single family. It's zoned as a two family. Well, the zoning allows two family if you have enough lot size. So any right, house right. could have that. So it's just basically how it's create, you know, okay. what it's utilized yeah. for. Yeah. So if so if you were to use it as a two family, so this would be the third unit, then you would need five parking spaces because, oh, well, I guess it depends on the size of each of the units within the um, Yeah, they're only in house. the size of one. Right, so now the, the, the unit that's being added would trigger an additional, the need for one additional parking space. Um, as functioning as a single family for the house, you only need two, so a total of three. However, if in the future, you wanted to rent out a second unit in the main house and it was more than a thousand square feet of area that became that second unit or that was utilized for the second unit you'd need two more so five total you know one thing to think about is that you've got this you know unified structure you've got this whole idea of why you're doing this but I'd like to give just a moment to think about if you sold one of the houses or if they became different would that change any of our thinking at this moment <laughs> well, <clears throat> I mean, it was really, it's really a function of the parking and can they accommodate. So I don't think ownership matters. I think it's the total number of units. Well, I'm just sort of, of confirming that they're not using a joint driveway or, you know, that there's not, you know, that it really can be a separable house if they want it. Can, can they really se sell the unit? Could they split the units in the split future? Parcel. Mm -hmm. You could create a condominium, but in order to create separate lots, you need a distinct 50 feet of frontage and 75 feet of depth. I don't know if the geometry is there to accommodate that. Okay. So they'd have to continue with a shared, the existing driveway and sharing that. Any questions of us? No, I don't think so. So. Your motion? I. John. Oh. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mark. Um, is, it, is there anyone in the public that wants to comment on the project? Yeah, I knew that. All right, thank you. Um, Do I need to close public comment? Motion to close. Thank you. Second. Second by Ann. All in favor? I move site plan approval uh, at 55 Maple Street, Florence, map ID 23A-059 to add a detached residential structure. Thank you. Second? Test second. Sit. All in favor? All right. Set. Thank you. Look with your set. Yeah, exactly. Airbnb. My parents. It's like, really? So the next item on the agenda is scheduled for 7.15, so we've got just a minute. Uh, do you want to do... Um, yeah, let me just catch, catch up. Okay. Um, That's actually why we were asking all talking so much. We just needed to eat up 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 So. And then I saw you and I'm like, yeah. there's a box of donuts somewhere. Um, Strata oh, yeah, co-location. Cool. <coughs> so, cool. so that you guys like provide guidance on how to like split stuff. So. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's good. That's the old building. Said supply. 
Yeah. And we kind of started talking about yeah. it. We just didn't know what to do. That's pretty good. It's cool. Yeah. 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 Somebody didn't like that one, huh? Yeah. Soon, right? I had a little piece of one. Okay. What is that? That's neat. I mean, no. okay. okay. Have you ever been to the donut so, dip in the um, yeah, we can and um, West Springfield? Yeah. It's the greatest That's thing. donut nirvana. It's, it is donut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's truly amazing. <laughs> This is the second time I've gotten these, but both times for a planning board. So we have uh, um, swatch You only have three minutes to eat them all. These things, are, they're, they're not, I'm just sort of against a donut they cost. We don't have any minutes, but you could do an A&R. Yeah, we have A&Rs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for that delay of game. Uh, we don't have minutes to consider, but we have a couple of A&Rs, so Carolyn can explain one of them to us. Um, let's see. So this um, this is approval not required on <coughs> West. Is it? Why am I not? Oh yeah, West Hampton Road. That was down here. Thought some of. This is right at the one of the curves, <laughs> West Hampton Road. Here, um, it's actually um, there's no, there's no creation of a developable lot. There were three flag lots that were created here. Um, it's west of Glendale Road, um, going heading towards <coughs> West Hampton, and there's a big curve, and then it starts going up the hill um, towards the Ridge subdivision. So it's um, basically um, there were three flag lots that were created, um, and there's and so this land is a portion <coughs> of that. This is not creating any developable land. This is actually for the purposes of getting conservation land north of the flag lot. So this is just divide, carving off a piece of uh, the back of the parcel to de dedicate to the city. There have been some historic um, lead mines discovered in this area. And um, it's all uh, sort of up on a hill um, um, heading up towards. Right. Which conservation area is it? It's new. <laughs> um, it wouldn't quite connect to um, the um, one coming off of Turkey Hill Road. So just the north, um, the next road parallel north is, tr is Turkey Hill Road, so west of West Farms Road. Mm -hmm. And there's some conservation land up there. This mm -hmm. won't mineral quite, hills. yeah, part yeah. of that mineral hills, yeah. but it doesn't quite come right. down this far. So this is another mm -hmm. big chunk. Mm -hmm. um, so this, the purpose of this A&R isn't to create a building lot. It's just for uh, gifting to the, the dedicated. How much land is that? Um, this parcel is the total parcel because we're doing this in pieces. Um, this one is um, what does that say? Thirty-one acre, almost thirty, about thirty-two acres, um, with a strip down to the road just for access. Any comments? Any concerns? Yeah, the city actually wants a property that has historic lead mines on it. Um, this is not that property. that's part of the discussion yeah. necessarily, but. That isn't this property though, is it? It's, it's the property that's there's, adjacent. There's a property adjacent to, to it. it. Yeah. This is sort of, this is like part of the yeah. puzzle yeah. that's coming together. Yeah. <laughs> so people don't fall in and. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve <laughs> and our lead mines. <laughs> Second. Okay. <laughs> Test. All in favor? Okay. Anyone opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we can take the 715 agenda item, which is a special permit for 10 lot open spaces residential cluster development and site plan for shared driveways with associated site development by Office of Planning and Sustainability on Burt's Pit Road, Florence Map ID 29-012. Okay, so um, the reason why 
there's not going to be a presentation <laughs> and there's nobody here except for one person, um, is that we just this week realized that because there are multiple parcels associated with this, um, we were checking the abutters list and um, we hadn't grabbed um, one of the parcels to as part of the um, defining the total abutter notification. Um, portion so we needed to continue this so that we could notify that notice has now gone out to the second list second group and it's been re-advertised as well so we put it in for June 8th at 7 p.m. Um, so the we would request that you continue it without discussion to June 8th at 7 I you also have continued the Atwood Drive project to 7 p.m. Um, I would suggest that this also be at 7 p.m., but uh, in front because there'll be more residents who would be interested in this. And so h instead of having them wait through another permit, put them at the top of the agenda and we'll just notify the mm -hmm. folks at the other project that they're on at 7, but it'll come after this one. So if you're agreeable to that. Motion, so motion, to motion to continue to June 8th at 7 p.m. Second. Second. Mark seconds. All in favor? Yep. I, I cannot be there. Junior. Okay. So is everybody, so Devin's not here, Alan's not here. What date is that again? This June 8th. 8th. It's a Thursday. Oh, yeah. No, I'll be okay. here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that should so does, be good. Excuse me. Does anything change with the information we have? So actually, I do have updated plans that I, I think. Is that the stuff that I came email? today? I emailed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the hard copy of the email, so I'll just pass these down. There's I bring some stuff for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan. Another A and R, or you sure. caught up with us? No, no, no. We've got two more, and we've got some other subdivision. Uh, so this is um, a two-part A and R, and it's really partially. Part of it's really was originally a perimeter plan, but this has to do with the the birth pit project that is before you, but um, because of the timing um, <coughs> for needing permits and needing to move the project forward for grant funding, um, this, our office wanted to move ahead to create a and plans for what has legal frontage now. Um, and it's all really based on the timing to um, get it in the grant cycle before the end of June. So this plan is for that entire parcel that's part of the Birth Spa project. So it essentially creates, um, it, this, uh, this was in your packet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the frontage for this parcel is still legal. It's 125 feet of frontage. And of course, there's plenty of lot area. Um, but it, we would carve out this box that are those Ten lots because that by itself is a is a allowed frontage parcel. So this is really to legally create these two um, portions of the property on this end, and then the second one I'll show you is what already exists on the other street, Stone Ridge Pond, um, on the north side of that area. So this is a, this is merely to create the parcel so we can move ahead with um, transactions. It's, it's this, these parcels. Um, it's not to create those parcels. Those will can only be created after the board makes a decision about um, that cluster. These parcels are where on that? Uh, in this rectangle right here. So, so it's the rectangle, not the parcels. So it's the rectangle and then this piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then this would have to be um, a, a third A&R 
if and when the board approves those parcels because they would only be legal once the special yeah. permit is granted. Any questions of Carolyn? Is there, no, is there any downside to approving the A&R first and then say if that's rejected or the, you know, the, set, the Burt's Pit development comes up? Does anything, um, does anything change or is there any downside? Um, the only, uh, so if um, the um, negotiation falls apart, is that what you're asking? I, I guess, yeah, I'm just thinking, do we, does somebody get boxed into a corner or something if this goes first? Um, no, because this is really identifying the outlying, the outer boundaries, and it is creating this, but you could always merge that back into this bigger um, parcel, and right now it's under, um, well, there are a couple of different entities, but right it, when it, if it becomes under single ownership, it doesn't really matter until it gets divided and sold off. Okay. And the frontage, I mean, the frontage exists, so anybody could come in and say, I want permission for this because the frontage meets, I mean, that's all the board is really reviewing right. is that you're not building any new roads, right. so, yeah. Okay. Okay, can I get a motion to approve an A&R? The road. Thank you. Uh, and I have second. Mark. All in favor? Okay. Um, and the second piece of that is uh, oh, can you actually hold that up and I'll show you context? It's, um, it's this piece over here that's actually indicated as an excluded portion of the. Um, of the project, and so in the blow, so the next A and R is um, are these two lots? They already they they're just sort of being reconfigured from their existing um, layout, and this is not part of the permit review because these lots are already legal lots. They're just being redrawn. So in the frontage is on. Um, Stone Ridge Drive, and they'd be two <coughs> building lots. That's regardless of whatever else is right. going on. Right. So why isn't that one part of the, that one? Because these are that was part of the negotiation. These are these are going to stay with the developer because this was originally these were two lots oh. that just never got built on part mm -hmm. of the Stone Ridge. Okay. Questions? And our test approves. And the A&R and seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Oh okay. um, so the next uh, sort of other item on the agenda <coughs> is for. Um, So for a reduction in performance guarantee for the for the Northview subdivision, um, which is the one at the at the state hospital, uh, Pecoy's project on the northwest side. So they have two performance guarantees. They have one that holds two lots under covenant, and the other piece of their performance guarantee is a tri party agreement that's based on the amount of money that's left to um, to um, build out. And so there's two requests that they have in front of the board, and um, I'm sorry, I need to pull up the exact dollar amount. They um, are asking for a reduction um, in the remaining amount. And DPW has um, looked at the numbers and is comfortable with that. We sort of, there was a little bit of back and forth because they had to do some erosion control up there. There was a, um, an issue with um, the detention pond that was built was sort of over the winter. It had not, um, vegetation had not taken hold. And so. Um, Just to be clear, is this the one where they, they cleared and it drops way down? Yes. That, okay. Yes. Um, so they were able to um, take care of 
of that, um, and they progress. They've actually, I think, they have the first. They have a binder course down now for the road. So they've done a significant amount of work just in the last month, I guess I would say. Um, so they're asking for release of some of that money, and I just I want to pull up the number here. Sorry. Um, This is the one across from the barn on the left-hand side. Is that right? Um, if you go around the top of that, if you go around the top of that, the barn is over here, and it's the, yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. Um, the last. Okay. So um, it dropped. Um, so they would like it reduced um, down to 530,567, and they have a schedule of values that um, was submitted for each line item that they still are is remaining. Um, and they s started up. I th I think it was around 800,000. So they want to subtract basically 300,000 around that of value reduced. So they've asked for that. DPW's looked at each line item to make sure that it's there. And they they actually added a number for erosion control. Um, so that's um, the request to reduce it down to 530, 567, and 42 cents. <laughs> <laughs> and the schedule, just for the record, there's, there's maybe 30 items on the that they've given estimates for, so they've broken it down and got some detail. Are you just seeing that there, or did we get that in there? Yeah, I mean, I can put it up on the screen if you want to be, it's a really tiny <laughs> print, but it's, it has, it's, um, they're done mostly, so they're almost um, pretty close to, the site prep and demo, which was originally in their um, line item, is almost 100% done. Earthwork is about 90% done. Um, they haven't done the utilities yet. Uh, they've done mo uh, almost, well, they've done 100% of the drainage. They've done 100% of the sanitary and water. And so the remaining is really sort of road and then some of the utility work, the installation. And then, of course, the finish work, grant, the curbing, the sidewalks, the landscaping, um, and all of that are the line items left. <clears throat> In the future, would time allow for that schedule of values to be shared prior to board meetings? Because I, I deal yes. with things like that all the time. And so what happens sometimes, I'm not saying this is happening now, but they'll show percentage-wise they're complete, but they front load the numbers to make it look like, well, the, the, ro the, the work that's left, the granite, the road, the utilities aren't worth much, the, the heavy money is is work we've actually done. So uh -huh. if you look at a percentage complete basis, you'd say, well, they're 95%, 100%, so they're good. Right. But if you actually look at the value of the work that remains, the numbers might be upside down. Right, sure, absolutely. And when one of the things, so typically what happens is they, they submit and it's, I mean, this is public information. I have no problem yeah. you know, putting it on the, um, putting it out there for you all to see. Um, so that's not an issue. That's I think that's exactly also what DPW looks for, is just to give you all comfort. Right. Level. So right. that's why we send it, because I don't have that same <laughs> expertise. Right. So I send it to DPW to have them um, feel like they're comfortable. With How that. long did that take, their review? Um, well, we asked them to revise it. So it was there's, there was some back and, back and forth. forth. So okay. I would say a few weeks. Yeah. So. But, Excuse me, something like this before the project ever starts, do they do what this is called a schedule of values? Is that submitted for approval before they start, or do they submit this after when they're looking for this reduction? No, we so they start at the beginning, they say, here's how much we think this project's going to cost to build. DPW reviews it and, and makes sure they're comfortable with the line okay. items. 
um, and everything is very specific for every pipe, every tree right. is, is a per unit count. And those line item values don't change once the project starts. Right, so and so we use instance. that and then they're saying, okay, we put this much in yeah. and, and um, okay. so we'd like, because we only have this much left, this is how much, okay. right. So we, uh, we approve the, their original estimate when they, uh, before they set the performance guarantee and we say, okay, well, that's how much you have to hold back. Okay. And then each time they ask, we review again. This is infrastructure and and uh, lawns and bushes and the infrastructure, not the housing. Not the houses right. and not the lots, not the not the utilities uh, okay. and the, the landscaping on it, the, the public, as it were. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Just for the road system. Yeah. And DPW did provide its it's okay on this. Yes. Okay. Does the developer have to give you any uh, paperwork that shows that they really have spent that? Um, I'm just pushing to see how, how much detail you get. Yeah, so every they're required to do weekly logs to the city to show what's been put in, and they also have to show construction oversight. You know, the, the engineer, there's a, there's a sort of a resident engineer that oversees the daily and weekly mm -hmm. work and they give logs so it's con constantly they're providing that data to DPW and then so that is sort of the check to see you know things are being done okay I wouldn't have surprised me if they provide it to the building office but it's the DPW because it's infrastructure right, right. okay any other questions <coughs> motion to reduce performance guarantee for Northview Second by John. All in favor? Any opposed? Nope. Okay. So then the other piece that they've asked to do is they have, in addition to that um, um, financial agreement, they have two lots that are under covenant, which means they can't sell. That's also part of the collateral, essentially. And they've got lot 17 and 18 under covenant, and they want to switch those um, to lot 8 and 9. So um, if you remember, it was sort of a lollipop loop. Mm -hmm. um, 17 and 18 are on the lower end, closer to Ford Crossing, and 8 and 9 are up higher. Um, and so they would just like um, to switch those around. I think when they first recorded the covenants, they weren't really, they didn't necessarily know where they'd be going first with infrastructure, so they weren't sure which lots made sense to keep under covenant. Mm -hmm. So this is fairly common practice to come in and just switch lots around once they decide. We did that a few times on the one off of Works Pit. Emerson, Emerson way. yeah. It seemed like we did that three or four times. Right. Is that a function of how they're selling out? And the wor where they're working and sort of, yes, the lots that are more desirable or what have you <laughs> at this point in time. Are we at risk of letting them hold aside lots that aren't that desirable and therefore they're not serving the purpose they're intended to? I don't, this is such a small subdivision, I would say probably not. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for Carolyn? Motion? Switching the two lots under covenant. Second. Second by Ann. All in favor? Such an agreeable bunch tonight. Um, we have five more minutes. We have to wait until we get to the agenda item. Uh, so, is there? I think there's one more. Yeah, there's three. Uh huh. Um, and so Barrett Street. So this is actually was a permit condition. Um, for the condominium project on Barrett Street. So there, if you recall, there was a concern about the whether or not the stormwater system would function the way it was designed. So the permit condition requires that they set aside enough money to sort of address or reconstruct or um, rebuild the system if it turns out it's not um, functioning the way it was designed. So um, they have to post that performance guarantee as part of the condition of the permit before they start um, construction. They've done some site clearing, but they haven't done any work. We have to define what this number is 
So they submitted a number to DPW. It seemed a little low. We asked for more detail, um, sort of again, the line item. And um, they came back around some $60,000 plus for the stormwater system itself. We've added a 20% contingency because that's required under subdivision standards. Um, so the total amount for the performance guarantee would be 76560 So um, you all need to officially approve that as the number, and then they would set aside that amount in a letter of credit or um, um, a bond or something like that. What's the duration? Like, for how long is that money set aside till we remove it or um so they would come back and ask for it to be removed and we'd want to see um, certification um, by an engineer that um, the system was functioning as designed so it's open-ended once we if we accept it tonight it's just yeah. it's open-ended right so what happens if sorry it doesn't work and that's not enough money what is the next step after that um, so they would, I mean, they submitted an, a per, they submitted information and based, and, and you approved a plan based on the performance of the project. So if it's not performing as designed, then they're out of compliance and they would have to figure out a means to fix that. So just to follow up, so it, they put, you know, that's their best guess, whatever, as far as money. But the reality is, it's does it perform, and it, the, the money will not become the limit as far as getting it fixed. Right. If that's what needs right. to happen, that, that right. doesn't. It's not right. like okay. Right. Yeah. Mark. My question is kind of on the heels of the last discussion. Is a schedule of values submitted ahead of time that the DPW approves? Because in this case, you said that their first number seemed low. They had a very back. generic number. They said. Here's this will be. I think they even said something like the detention pond, and it was forty thousand. And DPW looked at it and said, "That looks low. What does that mean? That it's a detention pond? Does that include the pipes, the infiltration, you know, right. all the leaders going into it?" And so then they went back to the contractor and said, "What does this include? Make sure you include all of these things." <laughs> so then the contractor said, "Oh no, it doesn't include that." Here's what it includes. And so uh, provide a line item. So now we know exactly what that number includes. My only concern would be not if it doesn't work and they're still around, they're on the hook to fix it. But worst case scenario, if, if they're knee deep in this and then they go belly up right. and you have $76,000, is that enough to hire contractor B to come in and make it right? And if the first pass by the DPW said, well, this number is too low, try again then that makes me concerned that the second no number might be low. But not having a value or a schedule of values. If, if there was a schedule of values and they said, all right, a first number is just a guess, or please clarify the DPW said, and then they came back with a line item breakdown, and DPW was good with that, then I'm good with that. If That's what they did the okay. second time around. The first time was just one element, and it wasn't clear what that was. And so from the DPW's perspective, they were thinking, the system has, you know, seems a little bit more uh, um, robust and necessary to have more items and, you know, it's more expensive probably. Tell us what this includes. So then they brought back all the items, they identified what they were and gave the value for that, for each of those. So is this, is this just a monetary guarantee or is this a bonded guarantee? So that if they go belly up, there's an insurance company behind this that will. Well, it would always be limited to a month. And yeah, it's a performance bond, though. I don't, what was the condition that was adopted by the board? Um, I'll get the specific language. I thought it was we had to verification that it worked before occupancy or before permit or something right, like that. Right. So basically, the value of the system had to be. Excuse me. Um, set aside um, so that if it had to be rebuilt or it wasn't working, then there would be money set aside in, in the, a separate uh, pot 
to that, the cost of the system. Yes, for the cost so of the system. So that would be the limitation, yes. but not beyond that for performing it up to any standard. Well, it yeah, I mean, it has to perform the way it was designed. So that's the performance. But the performance bond is in an amount that's equal to the cost of the system. Right. Mark hopes. So they could put a second yeah. system in, basically, yeah. or or if they need to add more. something right. to mm -hmm. enhance it. Right. Yeah. F for my education, I want to go back to the whether they're bonded or not, and whether that means there's a difference in the sureness <clears throat> of the getting the money if they go bankrupt. Right. If there's a surety behind it, then they go belly up. Insurance company comes in behind them, hires yeah. contractor B, and they get it done. If it's just a dollar amount that the city's withholding. They go belly up. Oh, and they recall, try to hire contractor B, and contractor B says, "Ooh, this is two hundred thousand dollars, not seventy-six. Then you're in trouble." Yeah, I mean, the, so the applicant gets to choose which it is to the value that they've determined the system, you know, cost to create. Um, and but we can't dictate which. Um, type of guarantee that they want to post right so they get to choose but we have language in there that says you know this is for you know we get to check to make sure it's working the way you said it was going to work before we release this money so it is i guess possible in a scenario that just like in any subdivision that someone else comes along and needs to finish it it might cost more than what you know because of the time passage and construction costs <coughs> go up or whatever. I mean, that's why we also put in the 20% contingency to cover, you know, some of that. Um, it's a little bit of a cushion. Um, my concern when you, you, the phrase you use, they determine this is how much that costs. And my concern would be that they shouldn't determine that, DPW should determine that. But if they sent a line on and breakdown, yeah. DPW signed off on it. Yes. It doesn't look good. You know, well, DPW obviously reviewed it because they said right, the they first said number too was too low. Right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, that, there was a heated debate, you know, there was a lot of issues concerning this development and, and just my concern would be as a group that we make sure we're covering all the bases on behalf of not just the development but the people around the development. Right. So, um... Any other thoughts? There were there were some wetlands in that story too. A lot of water and yeah. that, uh, another side note. Would, what if what if <laughs> on that lot? And we've had other discussions like this. If it works, but it causes all sorts of trouble downstream, that's off that lot. And is that basically somebody else's problem? Well, I guess that. But that's uh, you know. Um, how has it been described that it's going to work is the question under those circumstances, isn't it? Well, I thought we said, <clears throat> like we had that one in Florence that was the low point yeah, in the neighborhood, the and they said water. they'll fix the drainage on that lot, right. but they can't be expected to fix the drainage right. five lots right. down. Well, and you're dealing with the same sort That's of right. thing That's there, unless you were very specific about what it was going to do further down. Right. right, and you can't necessarily point to one thing and say, you know, if you, there's water issues in that area no matter what. I mean, there's high water, um, there's wetlands in the back. So people now sometimes have issues. Um, so they were showing that, that they're not making that worse. Mm -hmm. They're sending, they're actually distributing a little bit. So, uh, you know, I think um, you what they showed you was showing that they were addressing their their stormwater the same way the other projects are and that's yeah. the only thing i mean they, they can't fix you know existing right. problems in the surrounding on the surrounding properties i was just trying to stretch the conversation to 740. <laughs> <laughs> well i've just gotten the if you want the language i can pull that up um right here. So, sorry. Um, so, prior to commencement of any um, um, site work, the applicant must post a financial performance guarantee 
in accordance with the planning board rules um, that will cover the cost for constructing the stormwater system prior to posting the final amount shall be approved by the board the guarantee may only be released upon review and approval by the board the board shall make its determination based on reports from the applicant's engineer that the system is working according to the design and such evaluation report shall only be completed after all foundations have been poured and the street infrastructure is in place so they're going to come back to us and ask to release, release. that yeah. right mm -hmm. and that too i'm not comfortable with their engineer giving me the answer that would go before dpw to to see if it, it right. was performed if they could occur okay right. yeah dpw can't do the analysis <clears throat> right right also by it's by at the tail end of the thing because they're not going to build all the foundations at first well no they said i think the issue was they were saying they were going to um it it was a um, it make it's more cost effective for them to come in and do all the foundations well, at will. once oh yes. okay any other questions for carolyn motion to accept performance guarantee for barrett street seventy six thousand five hundred sixty dollars thank you tess second by john all in favor Unanimous. I'd like to open the third agenda item for 740 site plan 22 car parking lot by Smith College at 19 Arnold Avenue, Northampton, map ID 31D 057. Yes, sir. Just a point of note uh, I've worked with Jeff and Berkshire Design uh, many times and currently working with them because of the work I do. I don't think it um, precludes me from being impartial, but if anybody thinks differently, I can recuse myself. Anybody want to vote on that? No, no, not vote, but any, any hands raised? No? Thank you, Mark. Hey, Jeff. Off and away? Yep. Oh, you know what? That probably went on sleep mode. Okay. And everything else was working on this end. We used to have someone else who would have to recuse themselves from this one. The Smith engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're usually such an old map on here, it says Northampton State Hospital on it. The USGS map? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one on the front. A lot of funny stuff on here. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design. So perfect. Um, so we're here on behalf of uh, Smith College, who is looking at um, building a new small 26-car parking lot behind Fort Hall. Um, it's off of Arnold Ave. To an existing lot that they've got now. Um, I don't have my pointer, so I apologize. But basically, if you look at the right image, the aerial uh, green streets, sort of in the middle there, West Street on the right, um, a red star is roughly where um, what we were talking about. Um, the existing site now, and I, I apologize, just keep in mind that the, the plans orient a little bit differently, um, so north isn't always up. But um, West Street, in this case, is on the top end of the um, slide. There's an existing lot there now. Um, I'll go to the aerial because it's probably a little bit easier to see. Um, so there's an existing parking lot there now that was built as part of the Arnold Avenue uh, uh, Ford Hall project. Um, there are some rental units and office, Smith office buildings and some of the adjacent uh, buildings. 
the, the one building that you see, the one house that you see directly above Ford Hall is the site that we're looking at. That site, that structure has since been removed. I think it was removed last year, a couple, years. In, a couple years ago. Uh, so right now, which is an open lawn area, with the expectation that something was gonna happen there in the future. Um, part of this effort is combined with some of the other, you know, construction projects going on on campus. So there's gonna be large parking lots and parking displaced as part of other projects. So this is sort of getting ahead of that, getting ahead of that, trying to provide some of that parking closer to where they really need it in anticipation of those larger lots going away. Um, so what's really being proposed is, as you see there, um, the addition to this parking lot as part of this, the gray, um, you know, gravel area that you see between the houses just above the parking lot is just a small improvement right now. There's um, a gravel road and drive, if you will, parking area that provides service to or provides parking for all the rental units that are, you know, at those buildings and those locations, not necessarily in the parking lots. Um, and right now it, it extends, if you go back, it's, it's hard to see, but that gravel, all of that area behind those houses is all gravel right now. You can drive from that parking lot all the way out to West Street, um, the, the parking lot on the right, uh, which is the municipal uh, lot. So this is an effort to, you know, combine with the parking lot, clean up some of that, help to find some of that parking, you know, put the number of spaces that those rental units need, prevent some of the cross through going back and forth. Um, so just a couple of the, we are asking for a waiver from the photometric plan primarily because they're trying to match the existing lights that are in the current lot at Ford Hall now. Those lights, they don't manufacture anymore with the type of bulb that's in them. They only make them in an, an LED. I think these are low, um, sort of halide, I think. Um, but what we're trying to do is match those lights. So we're gonna take some of the existing lights that are in the lot across from the Felt building, um, which is the same light installed at the same time. There's three or four primarily for pedestrian purposes in this in this area. Um, relocate those lights to here and put new lights in, in the uh, felt lot. Um, so we're asking for a waiver for the motor photometrics just because those photometrics aren't available anymore is, is the bottom line. Um, the tree replacement, we are taking down one 36 inch tree. Um, I think it's a maple. We are proposing replacement of seven new trees. Um, there's an elm that we're gonna put. There's four or five flowering cherries um, as part of this project. Um, and those are highlighted in the darker green. Um, there's, there's a hedgerow we're also putting in. Um, we're trying to contain trash and recycling units for the rental units. So there's a lot of just sort of organization and separation of uses you know, as part of this project. Um, and then, um, again, these are, these are the lights that, that they're gonna be using um, that aren't available anymore, but we can, we can use the ones from the, from the felt lot. Um, as part of this project also, um, that large L-shaped building sort of just off to the right of Fort Hall um, are also rental units owned by Smith. Um, part of this project is also gonna propose to remove, there's some walks, um, so the left-hand image, left-hand plan is an existing condition. You can see some shaded walks on the, what's, what is the south side of the building, I guess. Um, those really aren't, there's a fancy bunch of walks and doorways that don't need to be connected. Um, the walk is heaved, it's, there's single steps in some locations, so we're gonna remove all that, put back just what we need for egress out to the front. There's also a stairway um, that sort of goes to nowhere. This is, oh no, um, did I lose the image? Yeah, I did. Um, I had a street view image that didn't, didn't make it. But there's a stairway on the, um, on one side of the building that doesn't go to any parking lots or any walkways. So we're gonna propose to just remove that in its entirety. What am I doing here? There we go. So it's a little tough to see. Um, so right about the corner there, right under where it says West Street, you can see a bright white sort of 
walk connection that goes from um, yeah, it's sort of right above um, off that corner of the building. There's a connection that goes from the front of the building out to the sidewalk. There's one adjacent to it that just leads to a, a grass lawn area. It's not used. It's overgrown by bushes. We're going to take that out um, and put some handrails in those um, stairs that are there now um, as part of the improvement. But it's, it's primarily focused on the um, Ford Hall, Hall parking lot um, and just improvements to the rental units around it. So. Just point out which the which is the biggest tree, that 36 inch diameter Big tree. tree. Actually, it's probably more visible in the aerial <coughs> image. Um, so if you can see oh. just to the back of the house, yeah. there's a yeah. big green wow. tree. I think it's actually a Norway maple. It's just, it's one that's been there for a while, but it's, um, you know, unfortunately, it's right here. Are the, are, the, are the trees going back all the same size? Um, one of them look bigger. The, we've got one larger elm proposed. Um, there's some flowering cherries that are proposed. Where I was going with the, um, the other project, the rental lot, is there are two trees, there are two oaks that we're gonna propose along the street frontage along West Street because um, right now there isn't anything out there now other than just a grass slope so we are going to propose some trees there um, and just subsequently after this um, submission did go in we did get some correspondence with the we have had some correspondence with the botanical garden who's actually got a number of other trees that they're looking to you know find homes for so just because there is a lot of space down here we may end up placing you know more trees than we you know actually need but um, you know this will be this will be the minimum number anyway other questions? I do have a couple of DPW comments. Um, I, I really liked the LED lights that you have on campus. I'm disappointed that we just wouldn't keep using those. I think um, I think it's in a, I think if they could replace all the lights at that location, they would. I think the concern is because you know we're taking out one, have to move it over to another place, and there's a continuous pedestrian corridor that you know. The discontinuance of a similar type of light will be more, you know, more of an issue than having one type of light. They really want to update um, some of the ones down at the fr uh, felt lot, um, and those are a lot more visible. And these, you know, these really are hidden behind, you know, all the homes and rental units and, and Ford Hall. So these are really pretty obstructed. Um, you know, I think that they had in the budget to replace everything they would. Yeah. Um, um, the other question I had is, um, we usually see a sort of parking space accounting for when Smith is horse trading. Mm -hmm. um, has that been done? Uh, not formally submitted, yes. I know, um, I don't know, maybe Carol can speak more of it. Um, Charlie kind of has been you know, managing this project and some of the library project primarily for, for Smith. Um, and I know this is sort of in, in advance of you know, the, the Nielsen Library project. Um, and I don't. You you may have had more conversations with them than I had. <coughs> yeah. Some of that, but I mean, I think the idea for that this is adding parking, so they'll put this in the in the hopper, well, <laughs> and then when they come to do the library project, they're going to show how many are going to come off, and so then the spreadsheet would mm -hmm. get adjusted again. Mm -hmm. So, it w I think the permit the original permit condition was um, concerned with spaces that come out of service. Right initially but um, so because this is just adding we haven't seen the updated spreadsheet well, I mean you have to approve it first and then they'll they'll adjust that um, I'd be interested in putting a contingency on seeing that pretty soon I I think for explanation to the public we you know we have a lot of land in, in the middle of town that's paved over and it's you need a lot of a lot of parking for a university but we, there's been a, a very careful give and take on trying to keep up with new and not just let it sort of evolve into more and more as we head into hopefully fewer and fewer. So that would be my interest if anybody wants to counter that, I'll take the discussion. Any other questions for Jeff? Uh, when are you thinking on doing this this season? I think they'd probably like to try to do it this season, yeah. It's a lot of concrete. Okay, can I? 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, DPW comments, but you right. want to take um, Does anyone here want to speak for the public? Nope. Uh, Carolyn has some comments from the DPW on this one. Um, so the, just two comments. One was about the proposed planting in the right-of-way um, on West Street, that they just want to just more of a heads up that um, before you propose, before that moves forward, you should just work with the tree warden to figure out the best location. And then the other one is they would like a um, condition uh, regarding the stormwater treatment chamber that um, before construction starts, they want to see um, a completed stormwater O&M plan and an inspection agreement for the system um, recorded and executed um, at the Red Street Deeds. Now, since there's a house there now, mm -hmm. there isn't, it was removed. It's gone. There's no oh, it's, it's, all it's vacant. <laughs> so now Very it's. Vacant. <laughs> so, so what we're doing right now, there's an existing catch basin on the site. It's an area drain, really, that takes water from that side of Ford and takes it actually over to Belmont Ave, which is sort of a convoluted way. And, and talking with DPW, um, it's much preferred to go towards West Street. So, um, you know, small update that had been made. The system is largely the same. Um, but we're, we're replacing one of the existing catch basins with a stormwater treatment chamber, and then that way putting all the new parking lot through that system, as well as taking some of the other, you know, runoff through that, which is currently untreated. So, you know, to the extent that we can, we've improved, you know, stormwater quality. <clears throat> so we would have three conditions to the motion. We would have um, the two from the DPW, which are the um, we're trees and stormwater. Stormwater, the and then uh, a request, um, um, my request to have the parking plan updated based on what this means to the total number on campus. And then also the photometric waiver. Do we need to separately? Do what? Do we need yeah. the a waiver for photometric plan? Um, that could just be part of your approval, okay. not a condition. Uh, Ready? Do you, you want to close public comment? I'd like to close public comment. Thank Second. you. Uh, Motion from Ann, seconded by John. All in favor? Um, need a motion for the project. Uh, move to approve the site plan for a 22 car parking lot by Smith College and 19 Arnold Ave, Northampton map by 31D 057. With the three conditions two by the DBW regarding the trees and the stormwater, and one regarding the parking plan. Second. John seconds. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Nope. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you, everyone. Do, do we have anything else on your list, Carolyn? John moves to adjourn. Second. Always yes. All in favor? Thank you.